The session outline is Vygotsky's theory in classroom practice and implications for teachers. At the end of this session, you will be able to discuss the educational implications of Vygotsky's social constructivist theory. In a classroom, it is possible for us to make use of social constructivism by making the classroom learning a dynamic process and a thoughts and language may be different in a diverse group but we can combine them using many strategies. It can be scaffolding by uh, MKO to enhance the zone of proximal development or it can be a simple classroom interaction or even interaction with some experts, guest lectures can be arranged, experts can be called to demonstrate certain tasks and such an interaction will help students to uh, gain from such more knowledgeable others. And there can be cultural mediation, the students can be celebrating different festivals, all the students can be celebrating all religious festivals of various communities so that it brings in a cultural mediation which is social as well as cultural and in this way we can see that the thoughts, diverse thoughts and diverse languages can be used to result in combined thought and action through social interaction. In the classroom, the teacher can make students learn through social interaction. There are different strategies which technology has made possible. Peer-to-peer -peer collaboration can happen for a particular thing. The teacher can ask, conduct bus sessions in which students sitting side by side can discuss in a hushed voice to come out with certain uh, ideas. Then what the students want to construct can again be discussed and it can emerge by collaborative discussion. Then there can be learning groups which can always discuss whatever they have learnt and reflect on them. Then technology has made it possible for us to express our thoughts in different languages and that also can be understood through social interaction. Then there are many web based communities beyond the classroom where we can be chatting with people and then find out what a particular term means when it is used and understand different people's languages, culture, rituals and all that. And a dialogue is possible nowadays with anyone across the world regarding any social issue or even religious issue for that matter, wherein people can understand the perspectives of the people in that particular culture and the terminology which they use to denote particular behaviors or emotions. Reflection is very necessary for absorbing whatever we have learnt and internalizing it and there can be reflection sessions which again can be collaborative in which everyone will gain from each other's reflections. Then the teacher or the more knowledgeable other can scaffold instruction that is in the beginning give full support to the students to mentor them and as and when they grow they become independent in their cognitive development slowly wean them of the support given so that they become independent learners. Again to understand what scaffolding is, a temporary structure which is created for painting big buildings, the analogy holds really good to explain the classroom cognitive support which is given by the teacher to the students in a class. The teacher or any more knowledgeable other who is a mentor for the student can be giving that temporary cognitive support which the student needs to understand certain things and slowly the support can be taken away once the student becomes more and more capable of doing it all alone. This scaffolding is possible in apprenticeship 
for example, the doctors, lawyers work under an expert for several months and as and when they observe the other person's behavior, the language and even their thought process when they think aloud, the individual will gain more from such an interaction and will become a better professional sooner than he would have done at an individual level. Under reciprocal teaching, the teacher can pair students in such a way that one knows more than the other. For example, in a classroom we have students who do very well and also those students who cannot do that well. The teachers can make pairs of such students and then the student who knows more about mathematics can be teaching that student who does not know much about mathematics and a student who is good at language can be teaching the other one who is not so good at that. In this way, reciprocal teaching is an instructional strategy which can be used to teach any topic where students take turns so that the more knowledgeable other for a particular topic will teach the less knowledgeable other and in that process each one will gain cognitively and also social interaction will lead to a very warm and conducive climate in the classroom where social relations also build to an advantage. The teacher's role here is simply to clarify the situation or ask questions. If the questions arise from the students, the teacher will have to provide clarification. This is also a very effective method in the class to make students interact and learn from that. There are certain situations where children cannot follow verbal instructions and the teacher will have to literally guide them to perform certain tasks and operations. And that strategy is called guided instruction in which the teacher and the students exploring math problems, they can share their different problem solving strategies in an open dialogue and in laboratory experiments or any computer operations, the teacher can not only verbally guide the students with instructions, but also uh, demonstrate different tasks so that the students can be imitating them and learning them faster. There are two kinds of strategies, cooperative and collaborative learning. Though they look, appear to be same, they are not. Cooperative learning strategy is one in which the teachers deliberately make cooperative learning groups which are heterogeneous, which have students of all different abilities and talents put into different groups and the teacher will give instructions regarding what tasks are to be done, what role is to be played by each student in a particular group and if there are some intra-group conflicts, the teacher will help sort them out and in this way the cooperative learning groups if made in the beginning of the year and continue till the end the intergroup competitions will bring in more and more intra-group cohesiveness and that will lead to accomplishment of many tasks better than an individual would have done all alone. Collaborative learning is the students will be asked to make groups on their own spontaneously. It is like birds of the same feather flock together and then this can be used uh, for performing many co-curricular activities which will again result in better accomplishment of skills and tasks as compared to the individual performances. Completing tasks through discussions, dialogues with more knowledgeable others is possible in such cooperative and collaborative learnings, the more knowledgeable others can be peers in cooperative learning groups or every group can be made to have a mentor or a coach or an expert which will again lead to that kind of interaction which is necessary for enhanced cognitive learning. So students, Vygotsky's theory of social constructivism has added a new perspective to the present teaching learning situation. There was a time when we were asked not to go for combined studies, study all alone so that you will not be distracted. But here is the situation where teamwork is recommended over the individual work 
and combined interaction about the different subjects is recommended over individual learning. And this can be used by the teacher to her advantage because in classes where the teacher ra student ratio is very large, the teacher will not be able to pay individual attention to each and uh, to each and every student. In such a situation, making cooperative and collaborative learning groups will facilitate learning and also management of the classroom in an effective manner. Reciprocal teaching will also help students to learn from those who know better about a particular topic and also give to them certain things which they know better. And interaction with certain experts and mentors can definitely help students to progress faster than they would have done individually. And then there are certain strategies which have emerged because of social constructivist theory such as instructional scaffolding, cognitive apprenticeship, reciprocal teaching and all this if effectively used by the teacher as tools can definitely enhance individual learning as well as collective learning. Thank you.